Welcome to our next episode of Driving, driving to the Res. To the Res. And we're actually driving to the Res today. Interesting. We are. Yeah. Today we thought we would catch up on the stuff that we've been doing that is not coronavirus related exactly. <laughs> Although we're on a coronavirus related mission. Yes, we're delivering some of the immune system booster. Res, we call it Resline Immune Booster. Yes. The Resline. Resline Immune, immune booster. booster. I called it the coronavirus cure, but I got cancelled by the copyright. <laughs> So we would call it a Resline Immune Booster. Yeah, because it's not a cure. We have no evidence of it curing anything. But there's plenty of evidence all over the planet with all these ingredients that it does actually boost your immune system. So that's what it's going to be called. Yep. Immune Booster. Immune Booster. And the ingredients are... Well, first I chopped up some lemons into little bits. Then I chopped up some ginger, which is a real pain, into some little bits, because first I had to peel it, it takes forever. So about a third lemon and then a third of that, and then I poured in a good heaping tablespoonful of a seven sacred mushroom blend that has, um, you know, chaga mushrooms and cordyceps and lion's mane and I don't know, a few other ones. And then uh, stirred up pretty good, made a mush. And then I put in about a third worth of uh, raw honey and uh, apparently we let that sit for four hours right yeah let it sit for a few hours before you have your first dose and you grab a spoonful or two stick it in some hot water stir it up and there you go yeah hot water not boiling okay hot water not boiling yeah so there you can you boil go. your water and then let it cool down or you can just stop the kettle just before it boils got it because otherwise it cooks uh, the raw honey right you don't want that you don't want that you want the raw honey to stay raw. Yep. Yep. So that's where we're on a mission of delivering our dose of Resline Immune Booster to our Resline Guard. Yes. We promised him a jar yesterday and we're going to deliver it today. We also have to check on the boats and um, we'll bring him back and bike that we had borrowed and we are going to be fixing a car. No. Pumping uh, up a tire. To pumping up a tire on a car. Yeah, so the kids chores, can use it. Aaron, I think that we can call these essential. They are essential things we need we to do. We are allowed to go to the boat. That's an essential activity. Yes. We are allowed to go to the store. We need to go to the store to get more lettuce. lettuce. We don't have any. Our lettuce hasn't grown in yet. something else on our list. And the kids do need a car. Right. To get around. Even though they're probably not supposed to get around. But I, you know. <laughs> and on other news. On other news. <laughs> what, were, what were we not going to talk about? I know. On other like news. center of the conversation. We have, the other day, I went to the Washington State Lemurian Portal and I started working there on the Ivan's Academy curriculum. And I had Lucy with me and um, after about half an hour to an hour maybe the temperature dropped dramatically dramatically and that is one of the signs of a portal opening it was so cold and I kept thinking hmm, I should get back I should get back and <laughs> I get looking at Lucy and thinking oh my gosh yeah but I have to carry her and she looks really comfortable so I kind of stayed there and she kept looking at me and looking at me and eventually she stood up and <laughs> left. She's like, it's too cold here. It's too cold and she found a sunny spot <laughs> and lay on there and I thought, oh my gosh, okay. So I grabbed all my stuff, I packed everything and I went home. But it was like quite funny um, that the, the, the temperature dropped so much. And um, we have organized for today, if the weather holds, we're going to have a... Crystal Lane party uh, today at five at the portal. So that's going to be really fun. Um, the last communication or insights that I had or knowings that came through 
was that we needed to add more uh, quartz to it. Also remember we did draw a card from the Lemurians. Oh yeah, one of our calls we did. Yeah, we used the Lemurians as one of our connections to wisdom. Do you remember what they said? They said, uh, wasn't that the one that said don't hold on to the... Let wisdom? it crumble? Yeah, let it crumble, wasn't that Let the it one? crumble? I think, I think so. it was. I don't remember. I'll have to listen to our own podcast to remember. We were trying, I don't remember who rolled the cards, but I do remember the cards because we're still focusing on those uh, for the three, for the two weeks. The right, do your niggle, take yeah. care of your niggle, whatever's take been niggling you. Take care of your niggle, you. yeah. Deal with yeah. it, just deal with deal it. Deal with it. Um, and um, let things crumble, release the old, and yeah. allow for new things allow to... Allow for the new things to build, which was yes. what we are supposed to be doing anyway, embodying yep. the new, creating the new. Creating, embodying and creating the new paradigm is very important. There were two other cards. Yes, so it was the niggling, um, the crumbles. After the crumbles, with the crumbling, wasn't there some people, like uh, people standing in the tree? The other one was the mirror. Mirror? Yeah. Wasn't it? No. <laughs> well, we're not doing our homework. You better be, though. You better be yeah. doing your homework and concentrating on these cards. That's hilarious. I'll come. It'll come to us. It'll come to us. And not this moment, because we're thinking about other things. Yes. So that's one of the one of the things that we've been doing. The other day at the Shaman Shack, um, the, we had the kids with us, and um, Larry came in and says, I think we have a broody girl, a hen that's broody. And I thought, oh my gosh, really? He says, yeah. So we went to check, right? We've and taken all her eggs out, by the way. Yeah, we always take all the hair, the hair eggs out. They had, but she'd been on sitting on that nest for two days. So Before that's a no good eggs. sign. It's a good sign that she's broody. So we took her out, and she'd been stuck in there for ages. Um, and then she ran back in, which is a sign of her being broody. So I grabbed four of the wild girl eggs, which are the ones that they're the cleverest. They're the most, the hardest to catch, yeah. and they have survived all sorts of things. So. The best. They are the best. They're uh, yeah, they're the best. We heritage can't... breed, isn't they're, that what they call them? Yeah, they're heritage, and I can't remember the name right now. Um, they're a bit small. They're very small, gray. They're, they're like fast gray little birds. Gray and fast and light, um, and they yeah. So I grabbed some of their eggs. I have four of them. I numbered them. And I said, okay, let's test it. And I brought them over and I put one of the eggs in front of her face on the nest, but not under her. And sure enough, she grabbed it with her neck and pushed it under her, <laughs> which is a sign that yes, definitely broody. So in about, I can't remember, is it 21 or 28 days? I can't remember. Yeah, I have no idea. We're gonna be getting babies, four babies, and hopefully they'll be hens because we have enough roosters. Gosh, don't we have enough? We roosters. have so many roosters because people keep dropping them off because they know we don't kill them and uh, feed them and look after them. So, yeah, if you can give a rooster a home, please let us know. <laughs> I'm thinking of making a rooster run. Like a hamster run where it's a little bit of a half circle run. They can run around a perimeter of the yard or something. Oh, yeah, perimeter of the yard, yeah. So they have some territory to cover. Yeah, that would be nice. All around the edges. All around the edge. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't know how clever I want to be because when we move the hens to the reservation, we'll let the roosters free. Yeah, then they can be they free. They won't need that. No, just a fence to protect them. Should be fine. A place to roost. And they'll be the rooster guard. Yeah, I will be. So that has been quite interesting. Uh, that would be lovely. We can post photos and stuff when they come out. <laughs> baby, the baby chickens are so cute. Oh my gosh, look at all the elk. We're just going driving past the field. It's called Warnock's Field. What is it called? Warnock's Warnucks? Field. Warnock's? Warnock's, yeah, it used to be Warnock's Farm. Slow down, slow down. Warnock's Farm has been now given to oh Poco River State Park. Wow, look at oh, that. Oh, that must be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, That's 70, good. 80, maybe a herd of 90 or 100. Yeah. 10, 20, 30, Probably 60. Somewhere between 100 and 200. <laughs> yeah, a lot of elk. That's a lot of elk. 
They're beautiful. Yesterday, remember, we saw some at Tohoku on the side of the hill in a uh, logged off area where they look just like the stumps. Yeah, I spotted one yep. looking at me. And I go, elk! And then I looked behind him and there was like 100 elks on that, <laughs> on that hill. Yep. And they went, elk again! And Larry and the kids looked and said, whoa! whoa. <laughs> didn't see those. They were right next to us. Right next to us, yeah. They were totally invisible and standing so still. It's really amazing. Really amazing. So, other things we have been up to, other news. Well, Lucy, she's doing great. She's with us in the car. Yep, she, she prefers not forced to stay her, home. Yeah, she forced herself from the jeep. <laughs> she, she forced herself into the jeep because we were leaving. Um, so we, we didn't have the heart to say no. So Yesterday yeah. we gave her a go at staying at the house. We did. She stayed inside. Romeo. Yeah. And she was pretty ecstatic to see you come home. Yes. She gets really, really happy when she sees me. Very, very happy. But when she sees you too. Yeah, she yeah, does. She does. She likes me. Yeah. Now we're driving past a beach um, on the Juan de Fuca. Juan, uh, Juan de Fuca Strait. Fuca Strait. Well, I, he's Spaniard, so he's not Fuca. Yes, he's it's Fuca. It's the Juan de Fuca. Juan, Juan de Fuca. Yeah, nobody says that here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you pronounce it, just to let you know. Okay. We I mean, I'm in, in Spanish pronunciation mode today. Well, it's quite funny, since it is a Spanish fella's name who found this straight, or name, it was named after. Of course, it had an Indian name, too. I mean, yeah, the Indians names. had been here for 10,000 years, but he but discovered it. He so discovered it, and we're he named name it, it, so we're going to yeah. keep that name forever, <laughs> even though none of us can pronounce it. Yeah. Well, that's properly. Hilarious. It's quite funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite funny. We're going to put a name, and that's it. Yeah. Wanda Anyway. There were a couple other things at the Shamachak that you were going to talk about yesterday. Yes, what was it? Oh, yes, I remember. So, we are further developing a technology that we heard about. Do you remember the, my, the man's name who was talking about that on a podcast about the creating sigils with sonic technology? No, nope, I do not remember his name, although uh, if I had my phone and I could search while I'm driving, which I'm not <laughs> allowed to do, I certainly could come up with the right, name. Right, right. Uh, we will put it in the description, okay? So if you read the description, it's going to have his name. Anyway, he figured out a way to make sigils. Um, I have it right here. Should I pull over? <laughs> yeah, you can pull over if you want. Okay, you can talk about it. I'll just hold my phone. I won't look, I promise. No, yeah. <laughs> so, we will put it in the description, no problem. Anyways, he started developing a technology to make sigils with sound, which we thought was genius. It's using Absolutely cymatics, genius. actually. S sorry, not sound? Cymatics. Cymatics. It is sound, but it's called cymatics as the process of visualizing the sound waves on pieces of metal and sand and it makes the noise mm -hmm. the noise goes through and the sand it arranges itself into a um, geometric pattern called cymatic mm -hmm. so I want to test it to see if it's the same image that it does in sand or water with corn flour which is another unknown one um, and anyways so we didn't quite get his methodology uh, but he described it briefly in the podcast and it, it sent our, our imaginations going, right? So we're going to be creating, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm very interested in creating um, tools that will lift the veil of forgetfulness yes. from all of us, right? And this is one of the things I'm going to be creating is a sigil. And I'm going to put the sigil for free on our, all of my websites so that you can download it, put it on your phone, you know, use it and see if it works, right? Because I'm 100% sure it's going to work. Um, and I'm also going to be making bracelets with the sigil on them on, and with certain uh, some, the, the crystals and other rocks that I know are high frequency. Um, and I'm going to put those on, 
on my website too for you to purchase if you want them. But of course you can make your own, right? Except that these are going to have my special frequency. Yes, special frequency. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be poured with my love. <laughs> so anyways, the name of the person is Joshua P. Warren. Okay, that's, that's his name. And he developed a way to make sigils from cymatics okay he calls it parasymatic sigils um, and he's got little videos in there and, he, and he's got some of the sigils that he's already created he created one for money he created one for love and romance he created one to see ghosts which is an interesting one yes <laughs> and he created one for psychic experiences he created one for UFOs and one for uh, attracting para paratemporals uh, beings, which yeah, non-human entities, that we call yeah. them, non-human entities. Mm -hmm. And then he decided to neutralize paranormal activities too. <laughs> I guess. So for stopping activities, because it got too much for him, he had an experience of <laughs> his wife came running out of the bedroom because somebody yeah. was pushing her around, and he was, whoops, sorry, whoopsie daisy. So Let great me fix that. to yeah, fix it, man. Um, and then well-being and happiness has got one for safe travel, one for pet protection. We definitely need that one on, on a shaman shark man. Um, and success, successful employment, he's got one for psychic self-defense, uh, strengthening willpower for a goal. So he's already got all these on his website that you can download um, and put it anywhere you want, really which are really, I think it's fabulous of him to have developed this and to put it out there. And we are, I think, because I haven't actually figured out how he does it, I guess I'd need to do research a little bit more, but we are tweaking whatever idea it is and we're gonna be creating a sigil for lifting the veil of forgetfulness and I'm gonna put it every, everywhere. And we're gonna, yeah, so if you download it, you can stick it on your notice board, um, on your emails because nowadays we don't go to local stores or anything <laughs> yeah. silly but you can put it on the park benches man um, on a little piece of paper with a sticker you know uh, so yeah we can spread it all over the world see what happens it'll be awesome and we're planning to do that this week that's what our project for this week the other thing that I mentioned also in our previous podcast that um, I'm working on is accelerating the ibensacademy.com um, and I'm going to be giving a series of lectures there for empowerment tools, mystical tools and um, information about the social change that we're going through right now, okay? So all about the coronavirus, the first episode is going to be that. We're going to have one about dealing with a cabin fever and also uh, tips and information about how to manage working from home and educating your children from home and how to become a leader at this time in, on the planet, which is what you're here to do. And um, I can't remember the other ones. <laughs> anyway, it's five. Maybe that's it. Uh, but anyways, that's coming out. We're working really hard on that. Uh, it should be really fascinating and of course the topics might change if as things and if things change and we need to cover other things because they're going to be live lectures and are going to be pre-recorded um, it's going to be more flexible but that's what's planned and subscribe to my newsletter in earlyevents.com for now and I'll send you the details when the academy launches and then you can subscribe there and get your your pass for the lectures right there so that's coming up and what else are we working on honey well I think it's worth uh, mentioning the, um, the the coordination or the connection between uh, Ibens Academy and Walks Me Now because a lot of people listening to this are Walks Me Now members uh -huh. and um, Ibens Academy is somehow it's, it's different but it's similar do you have the can you you know elaborate a little bit on it? Yeah, so if you think about introduction, the introduction would be the Walk With Me Now platform. That's where I hang out. 
I don't do Facebook or anything else. You see my posts, those are created um, with myself and Ilya and um, scheduled to come out. Occasionally I go in there to check things. Uh, I have been posting updates for Lucy on Facebook and but it's not really my go-to location. I don't hang out there, right? right? I don't hang out there. Where I do hang out is at walkwithmenow.com. So if you want to hang out with me and other high-frequency individuals, that's where we are at. That's yeah, where we're I, going. I have noticed that a lot of times people will ask questions or ask it. They have things that they want to know. They might ask them on Facebook or they'll ask them emails or they ask them this way. And it's so easy on Walk With Me Now. You just right there and it's exactly instant. it's, it's like instant i check it every instant. day a couple of times a day and i spend time there we do a live call every every month we do a live call uh, you can come and chat with me live and um, ask questions or give your insights and uh, feedback and everything else we do a weekly exercise uh, at walk with me now i send it out every week and we concentrate on different things as a group we also have a book club that's organized by the members and at the moment we're studying and reading the, my books because I'm an um, available author. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're doing and um, it's a unique opportunity, right? A book club with an author. So right, that's the last, what we're doing. The last book club we did was the Angel Book. Yeah, Interview with interview an Angel. Interview with an Angel and of course the replays are all available at Walk With Me Now. Yeah, everything's available that we've done in the past right there. And um, what other things do we do at Walk With Me Now? But uh, Why are you at Walk With Me Now instead of on Facebook or Twitter or something like that? <laughs> because of Walk With Me Now, there's a, there's a dedication, a commitment to embodying your highest frequency. The rules of engagement at Walk With Me Now is don't post if you're triggered process your triggers first and post later and it's also a location where you can really we can really delve really deeply into all the material that I put out there if you have questions if you have you know want to study with other people oh yeah so several groups have spontaneously been created around the world studying the love sex and relationships course the essential 101 course I think too and other courses study groups Right? from Walk With Me Now. And um, so it's, it's really your opportunity to really delve into the tools that I've created, hang out with me, talk with me and others, and um, do activities together. We also have, uh, every, once a week, we meet for an hour in the platform called Second Life, and that's for Walk With Me Now members. Speaking and students, of which, students and people like that. Speaking of which, maybe you can detail what Second Life is all about because I've watched that. I haven't actually joined that for various reasons, but I haven't. But every time I look over your shoulder and you're doing, it, oh my gosh! So the way Second Life is a virtual world that you can do anything in. Okay. Right. It's separated into three areas. At adult areas, we have lots of sexual depraved stuff. <laughs> really depraved stuff. I'm not kidding. Um, although they have, uh, they do report any illegal activities, like pedophiles are reported and other illegal acts are reported to the real life police. So that's at least that's in place. But other th other than that, everything is a go there. Um, then they have the uh, moderate moderate areas, um, and in there you can have like sexual themes or other type of themes. As long as they're behind closed doors, you can have those in those areas regions. And people have, you know, let's they, 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 there's at least that freedom that you walk in Second Life roads or sky uh, neighborhoods, and you don't have to be subjected to giant penises and vaginas and post boards, you know, which is really good. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to walk down the street without being accosted by a giant wiener. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, and then there's the general uh, areas, which is no sexual or other adult activities or imagery at all. Zero, not even behind doors. So there's those three areas that you can choose from. 
and I've been using Second Life uh, right like from the beginning years ago I uh, created I knew this was really uh, like revolutionary right because we could create anything we wanted there and um, but then I left because they didn't have a separation like that between regions it was all adult right so I left because it was literally just disturbing to log in and I know lots and lots of people left there was like universities there large companies like IBM and all sorts of companies in there and they all left because of the same thing so eventually the people who created it took note and separated it and now people are coming back and I came back two three years ago and I use it as a vision and a feeling board so if you want to manifest something in real life you go in there and you create it so Larry and I even though he says he hasn't joined he's actually in my avatar <laughs> yeah. we're not you know we, we sit on the computer together and move my avatar around and create stuff so um, I meet go to their meetings because we have a weekly meeting for walk with me now and other students and friends on Second Life so so I just wanted to say about that part it's like basically you went to a dream location a location that has all the things you could just imagine that you would love to experience built to experience in your body that basically looks you, like the body that you want your body to look like yeah. probably I mean some of them have wings some of them have well, you can be a little pretty spider. Pretty good-sized muscle. Yeah. Some of them have. You can have, be human. You can be, you know, anything. <laughs> anything that you can little imagine fairy. that you might identify with a fairy. Yeah. Whatever. They all show up to the gathering in their bodies and sit down, sit around, talk, chat, think about things, think about a topic, whatever it is. But it's like, if it feels like they're actually there. Yeah, actually you, you gather. Are, yeah, it feels like you're literally meeting with these people in real life. Right. It doesn't feel any different. It's, it's amazing. Pretty cool. It's pretty, pretty cool. I, I highly recommend uh, the effort it takes to create your second life just to go experience it. It <laughs> seems like it's totally worth it. And like everything else, right, it's all about people and connection. So the connection and people and why it's so wonderful for us is because we have high frequency individuals joining the meetings every every week on a Friday and um, that's why it's like that because if you were to go in and you don't have anyone to hang out with you're going to be on your own I feel like you're to, alone yeah and you're going to be you know you can explore there's tons of stuff to explore and you could make friends and everything that's happened I mean millions of people do that right I know of several uh, Second Life marriages, for example, people who have met in Second Life and then they meet in real life and get married. I've seen that over and over again. And these are successful marriages. And, you know, all sorts of things are happening in there. But from, from my perspective, why do I like it? Why do I join in every day? Not every day, but most days. Because we're creating beautiful feeling boards there for the Walk With Me Now members and students and also friends who want to go there and already have a very deep high frequency connection right and these days it's really hard to connect with others at a high frequency level because of the fear that's happening on the planet so this is a safe space you know Walk With Me Now is a safe high frequency space and so is um, the part of that service is the second life feeling board I call it feeling board um, I make a distinction between manifestation board and feeling boards okay so the manifestation is you put down stuff that you want to manifest in real life a feeling board you put down things that make you feel what you want to feel in real life so that's why I call them slightly different and um, it's been extremely successful our meetings are really 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 deep conversation it's we have a shaman shack in real life we have a shaman shack in second life and the conversations that we have at the real shaman shack are Just really like amazing great fantastic and so are they in um, second life you know so it's been quite fascinating 
to to have that. So yeah, that's why I'm in work, that's why I hang out in Walk with me now rather than Facebook, because of the high frequency engagement and the really deep conversations, explorations, and expansion of awareness that exists there. I see. Oh, and the difference with the academy. The oh, academy, yeah. think of it as a university. <laughs> We're going to have classes and courses and accreditation, accredited um, paths for the IABENS method. And um, yeah, we, we basically have a lecture hall coming up that we hadn't planned on, but we're going to do it. Um, and it's basically, I'm not going to hang out there. It's not a hanging out place. Although we are going to have like class uh, forums and things like that it's something for the student support and there's, there's a faculty um, and staff you know it is an educational online system that we're generating creating to be empowering in many many different levels so we were even thinking before this all this happened with the coronavirus thing we were thinking we're putting this out into the world so that the world can map to a really high frequency level of education. And boom, you know, that sounds this awesome. needed, yeah. So they're very complementary of each other. Yeah, yeah. They're not the same thing, but they complement the each other. Yeah, right. they complement each other. And say, you know, first step, maybe join Walk With Me Now for now because the academy is not there yet. Right. Um, there's lots of opportunity for you to study and everything, but you won't get cr uh, accredited for it. But once you do, once the academy is up and running proper properly, you will have a much easier time of being able to go through the courses and classes. And if you want to hang out with other people and discuss all sorts of other things, because we also discuss other teachers and other books and other methodologies, I walk with me now. I, by far, am the first person that will tell you my stuff is not the only solution for everything. It's not. There's hundreds of solutions out there and use the ones that most resonate to you. Right. And here we are at the res, at the checkpoint. checkpoint. Yeah, I need to get, I need to get my res line. I'm going to do Okay. Got it. <laughs>